I'm Luke, and with Joe, we took a look at his 2008 Mercury Mariner to try and understand the operation and functionality of a catalytic converter and the exhaust system. We started with a quick overview on the entire exhaust system to locate the catalytic converter. The major parts of the exhaust system in this vehicle were the exhaust manifold, the upstream Bank 1 Sensor 1 O2 sensor, the exhaust manifold pre-catalytic converter, the flex pipe, the downstream Bank 1 Sensor 2 O2 sensor, the second catalytic converter, exhaust pipe, resonator, and the muffler. This particular Mercury was a little interesting as it had a catalytic converter directly connected to the exhaust manifold system. This created some curiosity among us as we were not used to seeing a catalytic converter so close to the exhaust manifold, and on top of that, there was also a second catalytic converter. Luckily for us, all data actually provided a comprehensive description on how the catalytic converter worked and why the converter was located so close to the exhaust manifold. According to all data, and like we already know, a catalytic converter's optimum temperature is around 500 degrees Fahrenheit. A fast light catalyst, or what we called it a pre-cat, is a three-way catalyst that is located as close to the exhaust manifold as possible. Because the light off catalyst is located so close to the exhaust manifold, it heats up faster and reduces emissions more quickly than a catalyst located under the body. Once the catalyst gets up to temperature, the catalyst quickly reaches the maximum conversion efficiency for that particular cat. Simply stated, the pre-cat, or fast light cat, is located close to the manifold to heat it up quickly and maximize efficiency. Even though we understood why there was a catalytic converter located so close to the exhaust manifold, we were still a little confused on why the vehicle would need two catalytic converters. So we went and talked to Mr. Heisner. After speaking with him, our understanding was that the catalytic converter close to the exhaust manifold was a pre-cap, and like the description on all that is said, it was meant to heat up rapidly and start working faster. The secondary cat, or main catalytic converter, was there to get what the pre-catalytic converter could not convert. It basically operated as a backup system to clean up unconverted gases. As the pre-cat is much smaller than the main cat, it has a harder time being as efficient with the conversions of molecules. After we understood how the system worked, we went in and did some temperature testing to make sure the systems were functioning correctly and just to see what temperature readings would be as the vehicle warmed up. We tested the temperature before and after each catalytic converter at idle in increments of one minute over a five minute period. After about one minute, the temperature before the pre-cat was around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That number ended up being a little off because we tested on top of the heat shield rather than directly above the catalytic converter. We were able to accurately test after the pre-catalytic converter and got a temperature reading that fluctuated from around 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 192 degrees Fahrenheit. Joe then performed the same test before and after the main catalytic converter. The temperature before the main cat was around 160 degrees Fahrenheit, while after was around 147 degrees Fahrenheit. We continued doing that every one minute for five minutes, and to save some time, we made a graph of our results. The temperature readings were a little lower than we thought as well, as the highest average temperature recorded was 502 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as the secondary cat's output temperature usually being lower than that of its input temperature. We figured that we may be able to get better readings when the engine was at a higher RPM. Even though we were already at operating temperature, we wanted to see how the catalytic converters would react at a higher RPM. For this test, we did the exact same measuring the temperatures before and after the pre or manifold catalytic converter and the main or secondary catalytic converter, except this time we kept the engine at a relatively constant 2000 RPM. We again created a graph to make it easier to compare the temperatures between the two. Comparing the graph where the engine was at 2000 RPM to the original graph where the engine was warming up at idle, the catalytic converters in the 2000 RPM graph are obviously a lot warmer than they were before. Surprisingly, however, the temperature at both catalytic converters was higher at the input rather than the output, opposite of what is usually expected. We concluded that this was normal for the pre-cat, considering that the converter was connected directly to the exhaust manifold, 
and the gases are hottest directly after combustion. As for why the secondary converter's output was lower, we had hypothesized that since the engine still wasn't under very much load, or at a very high RPM in either case, that the pre-cat was most likely able to convert all the bad gases on its own, without the need for the main converter. While doing these tests, we also connected a scan tool to the vehicle's OBD2 port, so we could also monitor the O2 sensors and how they were switching. As we learned, the upstream O2 sensor should be switching a lot more than the downstream O2 sensor. Over the course of 30 seconds, while the car was at idle, the upstream O2 sensor went from under 0.1 volts to over 0.1 volts four times, sometimes getting up into the high 80s, while the downstream O2 sensor only changed from under 0.1 to over 0.1 once. The PCM monitors how many times the downstream O2 sensor switches and its voltage to help measure catalyst efficiency. The last thing we wanted to do was test the vehicle with a lean condition to see if that actually had any effect on the catalytic converters. Because the O2 sensors only monitor the pre-cat, we only did temperature testing before and after it, not the main cat. Again, to test the catalytic converter, we took a temperature before and after it every minute for five minutes and recorded our findings. The lean condition did not cause too big of a change in engine performance, only a slight drop in the engine RPM when it was first created, as well as not really having an effect on the catalytic converters. The only thing that was noticeable through our testing is that they seemed to be running a little hotter than usual. We were also confirmed in thinking that the catalytic converter on this vehicle was good, when Joe passed the admissions test on Saturday.